Welcome back. One very important application of differential equations is, is the manner in which some quantity changes over time. Well, that's, that's really what we're talking about, right? Is derivatives are, are, are rates of change, and we live in time, and so things are always changing. That sounds really dorky. We live in time, man. Things are always changing as time goes forward. Well, that's a time rate of change. So a time rate of change really is a look at how some quantity is changing as, as time changes. One of the man, biggest things we can talk about is population. So populations are always in a state of change. Populations of bacteria, popu human populations, um, insect populations, whatever you want to talk about, populations are almost always changing. So we're going to take just a brief look at how this works. Now, this is an introduction. We're going to get really heavy into this in about like 25 more videos, okay? So we'll get really deep into um, rates of change and population increase and decrease as it relates to time with death rates and birth rates and all of that. Right now, it's just a brief look at it. So here's what we can, we can do. So the first thing we're going to do is if we have like p population and t time, I want to talk about where these differential equations are even coming from. So let's say that we want to determine the rate at which our population is increasing or decreasing. Not just a population, because that's just a census. You just count all the people, you got it. But how it's changing, that's important. That, that's planning, that's what's going to happen in the future. Are we increasing, are we decreasing? How much are we increasing, what's it look like? So if we want to think about the rate of change of our population as it relates to time, well, that's a derivative, isn't it? The way that our population is changing as it relates to time is a derivative of the population function with respect to time. So if we want to look at that, that right there, that's a first derivative. If I do that, that's a differential equation. I have nothing over there yet. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But that's a derivative of population with respect to time. The way that population is changing with respect to time. We need to get it in your head that a derivative is a rate of change. We need to get in your head that differential equations deal with rates of change. So that's why they deal with derivatives, is they're looking at the way or how to model these huge math problems based on changing things that would would say this is the way the population is changing or the rate of increase or decrease of the population with respect to time so according to how time is progressing now it's been studied a lot that typically a lot of times most of the time populations are proportional uh, sorry uh, let me rephrase the way a population changes the way that it increases or increases or decreases is proportional to the population itself. So the more people you have, sometimes the faster the population increases. The fewer the people, the slower it increases. It usually makes sense. We're gonna, for a very simple case, we're gonna assume that the way the population changes, the rate of change of the population with respect to time, is proportional to the population itself. When we deal with proportionalities, if you wanna look back at, um, uh, direct variation, inverse variation, that would be like intermediate algebra level. Whenever we say varies directly or varies inversely, we have a k, this constant of variation. Same thing here. So our population varies, or the rate of change of our population with respect to time is proportional to the population. That's some basic stuff that we've had. So this well might look like, where's that coming from? It, it, it's, it's not coming out of nowhere. It's saying, hey, uh, that's the way our population's changing, and it's proportional to the population. That's it. Now, we've got to be able to solve that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat. I'm going to give you the solution, because I haven't taught you how to find the, the equation that would work here. Um, there's some techniques you're going to get in the, the next few videos that show you how to do stuff like this. Right now, everything's been given to you, and that's okay. We're just learning what this stuff means, essentially. So what, where we're at right now is that's now a differential equation. Look, it's got a derivative. What's a derivative? What's that even mean? Well, this is the rate of change of our population as time goes on. How, what's it equal to? Well, we understand that the rate of change of a population is proportional to the population itself. So that's where that case comes in, constant of variation. It's a constant. So I'm going to give you the general solution of this. So 
our solution, notice how this is a derivative of the population. So our, our population function is going to be our general solution here. Let's verify that it works. Remember that this could easily be written as p prime. So I know we used like y prime, y double prime before. Now we're kind of switching over into the more Leibniz notation of dp, dt, derivative of population with respect to time. Um, I'm going to use that pretty much throughout the, the course uh, where I can. I prefer it. It's more expressive, especially when dealing with times for me. So let's verify that this right here is actually a solution to that first order, first derivative. Differential equation. It's got a derivative in it. It's an equation. Let's see if it actually works. So we're going to, just like everything else we've done in the previous videos, we're going to take a first derivative. The derivative of the population with respect to time is, well, let's see. That's a constant. There's no product rule. This is a chain rule. So we have, I'll put the k first. we get back the function times the derivative of our exponent, which is just k. This is with respect to time. Let's plug it in. So we're gonna put our first derivative where our first derivative goes, equals k times the original function, what I just gave you, our, our, the thing I'm proposing is our solution. And they're exactly the same. What that means is that, it, just like before in the last couple of videos we did, that is in fact a solution to that differential equation. This is a general or family of solutions to that differential equation. Well, what's it going to take to find c? Oh yeah, we need an initial value. So when we're doing this, number one, we're showing. We're showing that this is actually a solution, that we're verifying that. Number two, we're going to solve for c. We're, we're going to use it. So we're going to use our initial value problem, and then we're going to utilize it. So let's practice that. So step one was coming up with this, or that's given to you, or understanding that rates of change are proportional to population. Or rate of change of population is proportional to the population. Okay, this, um, you're kind of cheating right now. I'm giving it to you. I will show you how to find that later. So given this, we verify that that's actually true, and now we need something more. We need something to find that C to actually use it, because if you, if you haven't recognized, right now we have two constants. That's a, that's a bad thing. Uh, it's because we can't use anything here. If I tell you, uh, how about plug in five years, you go, okay, five. But there's nothing there, and there's nothing there, so you get C to the 5K, and that does nothing for you. We need to find out what C is. We need to find out what K is. So those are those two pieces are found by two different values. Usually a starting amount and how much you have after some time has passed. We need two points here, one for the C, one for the K. The initial value is almost always how you find the C. So let me say this. How about we start with um, a thousand bunnies? That's a lot of bunnies. Oh my gosh, I did not think that through. So a thousand bunnies. At t equals zero, we got a thousand bunnies. In other words, since that's a population function and it's based on t, the population at time zero equals a thousand. Is that looking familiar? If you watch the last video, is that looking familiar? I hope it's looking familiar because that's an initial value problem that says, hey, uh, when t is zero, population is a thousand. Okie dokie, we can, we can do that. Uh, when t is zero, population is a thousand. Notice, we are done with the differential equation. All we had to do was verify that's a solution. Now, in, in future lessons, we will be solving this for a solution, then using it. Right now, we just verify it and you're done. You're, you're done with it. All you got to do now is utilize it. So I know that that's our general solution. I further know that that's our initial condition. Let's plug it in. It should let us solve for C. Um, initial values are what is used to solve for your arbitrary constant, the C. The proportional constant, or the, the uh, constant of variation, or constant of proportionality, that's found by the next piece. So, differential equation, solve it or it's given to you, cool, verify it, now we solve for C. 
Look, if this says whenever t is zero, our population is 1,000. Can you see why it's really helpful to have an initial value like t is zero? Because at t equals zero, where you start, that's important. If t wasn't zero, you'd still have a k here, and you'd still have an e to some number that's not zero. That wouldn't give you one. That wouldn't let you solve for c. So it's really important, and why initial values are helping us solve for c, especially in this case, is that it zeroes out the exponent, and e to the zero power is one. So 1,000 equals c times one, or c equals 1,000. You, man, I hope this looks familiar to you, like from um, your calculus two days, where you'd have something exactly like that, and it would say, yeah, well, this is a p sub zero e to the kt. Well, where's the p sub zero coming from? What, that's, that's initial population, but where, why are they getting that there? For right here, because the initial population, the population at time zero, the population at time zero is going to be exactly equal to c. That's where that comes from. So we know that we found t, or, well, sorry, that we found c is a thousand. Notice how that works from what I just talked about. That's the initial population, a thousand monies. How do we know that? Well, that's what we started with. And we plug in time equals zero, that's what we start with a thousand bunnies, and that's it. Now, well, we to find the k to really make this useful so we need something else let's say that the population of bunnies tripled in one year's time you gotta put that in numbers the population trip so what's the population if it tripled uh, it'd be 3,000 population tripled in one year's time so if t stands for years P of 1 equals 1,000. After one year, we had 3,000 because the population tripled. We can use this now. So after we found C, we can use this now to find our K, our constant of variation. So let's plug that in. So this says that any time T is 1, our P is going to be 3,000. Three thousand. 3,000. 1,000 stays, E stays, the K we're looking for, T is 1 because that's after one year. Does it make sense to you that the first step we should do is divide and we'll get 3? It's triple. It should be 300% increase. It's triple. E to the K. So now we're going to have to solve for K. Remember your logarithms. Remember your natural log. Let's just do a natural log on both sides. So k equals ln 3. <clears throat> and if we plug that back in, to what we already have, 1,000 e to the kt becomes 1,000 e to the ln 3 times t, because our k was natural log of 3. So let's go ahead and let's, let's find, uh, let's use this to find the population in, in a little while's time. So uh, if you want a little recap, we start with the differential equation, we solve it somehow, or it's given to us, we verify, immediately verify. After that, we know we have a general solution. It's going to take two pieces of information. One is going to be, well, an initial population. So at time zero, how much did you start with? That's going to solve for C for you. Next, we'll need what happens in a little while's time. So some definable amount of time, like one year, two years, one month, one minute, whatever it is. Uh, plug that in, and it's going to let you find your K. Now we can use this for practically anything. How many bunnies are going to be around in three and a half years? Probably a, probably a lot. So let's find P of 3.5. One more thing you might want to do, just to make this not as obnoxious here, 
you can do some mathematical razzle dazzle with that. Um, if you have ln of 3t and an exponent, remember, I'm going to do a little, little sub note here. Remember that. Uh, x to the m times n is x to the m to the n. You go, well, what's that doing? Anyway? e to the ln 3 times t is e to the ln 3 to the t power. But because you have E and LN composed on one another, you have inverses in the composition. These are gone. You're going to get three. So you can rewrite a lot of these by just doing, well, this is going to be one, that's a crappy T. 1,000 times 3 to the T. That makes things a lot more concise. So where did that come from? Well, you have a multiplication of exponents. That's an exponent raised to an exponent e to the ln 3 is just 3. So you have 3 to the t. Try it both ways if you'd like. See if it actually works. I, I just, I'm just begging you right now. Just please don't multiply those into 3,000. Begging. Okay, just begging. That breaks order operations. Exponents before multiplication. Uh, you'll notice I have 3.5 and still the T because I want to see where it comes from. Now if I want to find out how many bunnies we got in 3.5 years, just plug in 3.5 for that T. Oh my gosh, if you did that yourself, 3 to the 3.5, I hope I did my math right, 3 to the 3.5 is big times a thousand, I have 46,766 rabbits. Or thereabouts, if my math was right, I did it quick. Um, but that's, that's a lot of bunnies in three years. They're bunnies, I guess they do stuff. Anyway, uh, so rates of change, th that's what differential equations are in the first place. So these are just with respect to time. Populations, things that grow over time, that's, that's what a time rate of change is. It's a differential equation that's specifically geared towards time as the independent variable. Done exactly the same way as far as verifying, done exactly the same way as far as you need an initial condition to find a particular solution, in this case to eliminate your arbitrary constant. That's exactly what we were doing last video. The K part of it, you need something else for that. So you need, where are you in a finite amount of time? That will let you solve for K after you have used your initial condition. Use that first. Then, once you've found the constant, the arbitrary constant, and the constant of variation, your K, you can use it for lots of things. How many bunnies are you going to have in three and a half years? Lots of bunnies. Or, um, they're all cute. Or whatever else you have. How much are you going to have in 20 years if this holds up? Now, later on, we're going to talk about stuff like a limiting factor on population. There's, there's a carrying capacity. We don't just get to multiply forever and expect that the same area is going to, set, to sustain this population of bunnies. So uh, there's going to be birth rates and death rates. This would be the case if none of the bunnies died. Well, we know that bunnies do die. And, and more bunnies are, are born and, and things like that. So we're going to have some more robust examples later on. This is just to get your feet wet to understand difference of equations as they relate to time. I hope that made sense. I hope that you guys stick around for the next ones. We're going to start learning how to actually solve some differential equations from scratch without being given the solution next time. Thanks for watching.